a crowd like this in a while and then I heard the music and I thought there has to be a movie going on right this is where you're showing Star Wars no no then what are you doing here it's Christmas Eve it's Christmas Eve of course well I thought it was we're watching the Star Wars when I was ordained my church gave me this robe and my butt my very very good friend said to me I don't know if you look like a minister but you sure do look like a Sith Lord <laughs> So I thought I would dress up because I thought I was going to the movies, but I guess, I guess I'm coming to church, coming to church instead. You know, a long, long time ago, way before any of you were born, way before many of you were even thought in your mama or papa's head, back in 1977, a little movie came out that opened to only 35 screens. And that movie, the studios thought, was going to be a huge flop. And the first weekend that that little movie opened in 35 screens, it was crushed by the biggest Hollywood star of the late 70s, Burt Reynolds, and Smokey and the Bandit. <laughs> Everyone knew that Burt Reynolds' movie was going to do really well, and no one thought that this little movie that opened to 35 screens could amount to anything. And that movie was called Star Wars. Star Wars, right? But as the weeks went on, the word got out that the movie was amazing. And next thing you know, it goes to 100 screens, to 500 screens, to 1,000 screens, to 2,500 screens, to 3,000 screens. And the lines to get in to see the movie are so long because people kept talking about how much they loved the movie. And it became an international sensation. And it changed many people's lives. Like people like me, who was a boy, born in the 70s. Remember a couple of years ago, maybe it was last year, there was a movie called Frozen? And how every little girl from about the age of four to ten was obsessed with this movie for about eight months. Like, you couldn't get away from it. So Star Wars is like that for boys born in the 70s, but it's lasted 37 years. <laughs> and we still buy toys. I wouldn't exactly like that. You do! So, the story of Star Wars, I think everybody knows. It's a story of hope. It's a story of peace. It's a force. It's a story of the force that binds us all together. That binds us all together and binds us with every living thing. And it's a story about faith. And mostly blasters. And blasters as well. But it's a story about faith. And it's a story about the faith that, yes, and like, we'll get to that in a second. And it's a story about faith. The faith that a son has in his father that his father even though he's done horrible horrible things like darth, vader. darth vader very good ray ray can, that even darth vader can be redeemed and can get better our christmas story is kind of very similar to the star wars story it's a very similar story it's about hope hope that tomorrow can be a better day than today it's about peace. It's about people living together in peace and no longer doing mean things to each other. It's about joy and about faith. The faith that God, no matter what we do or where we go, that God will always love us no matter what. And that love is so powerful, so powerful, that we can all be redeemed and we can all be reconciled and we can all be brought back together into one big human family. How many of you walked into, how many of you walked into church tonight being afraid? No, no, it's not very scary coming to church. Sometimes, but 
usually not very scary. How many of you were scared when I was walking up the center aisle with my, with my a little bit? Marg was scared. Marg was scared. Well, one of the, oh, there we go. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. One of the, th one of the, one of the great stories and one of the great messages about the Christmas story is that we shouldn't be afraid. And we're really lucky that we live in San Diego and it, we can come to church and no one does anything to us. No one stops us. No one makes us be afraid for having to share our faith. That hasn't always been the case. I knew a guy, I knew a guy a couple of, a couple of years ago in seminary, which by the way, I forgot to show you this. So I had a friend, I had a friend who grew up in Leipzig, Germany. That's a long, 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 long way away. And today Leipzig is very similar to San Diego, where it's a pretty peaceful place, and, it, and it's a democracy, and there's no oppression, and people can come and go to church however they want to, whenever they want to. But years and years and years ago, when my buddy was probably about Charlie's age, he lived in Leipzig under very different conditions. And one evening when he was about 10, 10 years old, when he was 10 years old, he came to church on Christmas Eve and the police, the state police came and surrounded his church. Now, why did they surround his church? Because his pastor had been talking about how the government shouldn't make people feel afraid. And that it was God's story that we should live in hope with the hope that all of us can live with peace and that we should love each other. And that state government said, no more of that, little, little pastor. We don't want you to share that message anymore. And they knew that on Christmas Eve, lots and lots of people were going to show up. And so when they came in to do the Christmas Eve service, just like we are now, outside, there were hundreds of police officers, not with lightsabers, but with guns and dogs that were trained to hurt people. And the word started coming into the church that they were all going to be arrested. And people started to get really, really afraid. And rightfully so. Because they knew that once they knew that once they were arrested, that some really bad stuff could happen. But guess what? That church didn't have lightsabers. Not real ones, and definitely not plastic ones. All they had, watch out there, Bella. All they had was their faith, their hope, the teachings of Jesus, which the little baby rose up to tell them that they should live in peace, and they each had a candle. And so, that's right, Ray Ray, Ray Ray's already ahead of the game. So the pastor, not having a lightsaber, but instead just having a simple stole, put on his stole, and told everyone not to be afraid, that everything's going to be okay. And then he invited them all to take a candle, just like we're going to take a candle in a little bit in our service, and he lit it. He lit it. And then... He invited everyone to start singing Silent Night, which we're going to sing a little bit later in the service. But of course, they sang it in German. And as they started walking out of the service, all of them with their candles lit and singing Silent Night, they bravely exited the church into the dark of the night, thinking they all were going to get arrested. But by singing Silent Night, and by seeing the power of the light in their hand and the light of Christ in their heart, God did a miracle. And God calmed all the police down. They separated and made a path right down the center. And they all followed the pastor out of the church, past the police, into their cars, and they all went home safe and sound. Now, that always doesn't work. Sometimes people try to do peaceful things, and it turns out really bad, and they get hurt. But on that one night, on that one Christmas Eve night, the light 
overcame the darkness. How? Wait, 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 wait. Not yet, bud. You know how many Star Wars movies there have been? Seven. 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 You know why they keep making Star Wars movies? Because people love them and they make a kajillion amount of money. Yes, they, they make them because, they, because people love it and it makes a lot of money. How many Christmas stories are there? How, how many Christmas stories are in the Bible? Well, there's a couple. There's one. There's one story about Jesus being born and about the light coming into the world. You know what? We don't need any more sequels. We don't need any more installments because we're the installments and we're the sequels living out the light of Christ in the darkness in our lives, in our community, in our nation, and in our world. You are the beautiful light of Christ. You are the beautiful light of God. It shines in all of us. All it needs to be is awakened. So may the light be awakened in you this Christmas. And may the force and may, be, and may God be with you. Merry Christmas. Amen.